I'm joined this morning by local author Charles Meyer. He wrote the book Letters from the Sandbox. Now, Charles, for our viewers who aren't familiar with this book, explain what all it's about. Uh, letters from the Sandbox was a compilation of actual letters that I wrote back home to my friends and family. And um, they're real life, no holes barred, nothing is politically correct, spicy as a Texas bowl of chili, <laughs> letters, yeah, I mean, from, from the heart. Mm -hmm. And what happened was, is I put all these out and I emailed them to my friends and family. And for whatever reason, my friends and family email them to their friends and family. And it started this cascading effect and rolled on. And I'd had people email me that I've never met and say, when are you going to write a book? Mm -hmm. um, in 2006, I hit an IED and uh, had a lot of time to recuperate. Mm -hmm. One of my very good friends came to me and asked me how the book was going. And um, I told him, well, I'd get to it as soon as I got all the emails together. Well, he handed me a shoebox with every one of my emails in it. Good for him. And mm -hmm. said, now you, you don't have anything, but uh, time to figure out what you're going to do. Here's mm -hmm. your emails. There's no more excuses. Just get it done. Mm -hmm. So I did. I uh, got it done and got it published through Libris Press. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been out. It's on Amazon. It's mm -hmm. on, uh, you can Google it. It's all over the place. Uh, it's been to the Library of Congress. It's, uh, it's been up on Capitol Hill. My book, just like myself, has been all over the planet mm -hmm. just because people found it and they found a certain truth in it and they found it to be rough and raw and mm -hmm. politically incorrect and I think that's the the people that enjoyed it. Uh, I've gotten a lot of calls from military wives and family members um, that have read my book and their 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 children's or significant others have been in you know, the job jobs that we've been in that they couldn't talk about or wasn't, wasn't able to talk about or for whatever reason didn't talk about and they've said you know after reading your book I can understand a little bit better of what went on and what happened mm -hmm. and uh, after you know the amputation of going through I've had a lot of people that have had the same issue that, you know had a part ap amputated mm -hmm. and from reading it they realize they can see it's not the end of the line you can actually go on mm -hmm. which you know leads into other stuff that I do I like to do a lot of stuff for uh, military and civilian people who've had um, traumatic injuries mm -hmm. just to go out there I believe if I can help one person figure out that hey this is just a little hurdle and we could step over it I mean if I can do it anybody can do it well you're not helping only amputees Charles you're helping all of us because you make us realize just how you know how much we have to be thankful for we don't need to be sad about something little it, we could ha be losing a limb, which could be a whole different story. Oh, absolutely. Right? You can always find somebody who has it a little worse than you do, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, even in, you know, in, in a position that uh, I'm in, which I don't even call a position anymore because mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of soldiers that have come back that have uh, jumped over bigger hurdles than I'll ever think about, you know, doing double amputees and triple amputees. I've got a real good friend of mine uh, by the name of Chris Corbin, who's a... SF guy, um, dog handler. He lost both of his legs. He comes down here and he does the dagger dive. Um, he goes around to the military hospitals and mentors and helps helps uh, the soldiers and sailors and you know people that are just coming back mm -hmm. with that thing. And it's a great program. You know, it, it sits out there and it lets people know. Well, all right, it's a hurdle. Mm -hmm. As long as as long as you can get behind it and they they have a good support group or they have that one person who go. Hey, yeah, take care of it. Let's mm -hmm. just get up and start walking. Mm -hmm. They do it, and it's, and it's easy. Awesome. They get back into the game. So awesome. I can't imagine some of the things that they've seen and some of the things that have happened to people. And you can hear about some of these experiences, again, in your book, Letters from the Sandbox. Sure. Could you read a little bit from the book, Charles? I'll find something that's uh, not too <laughs> spicy. Right? right. <laughs> something to put on TV. <laughs> um, a little backstory on this one. This was going to be on page 92. It's called Operation Ladybug. And it would seem that during my time over there, everything was trying to kill you at one, <laughs> one point in time. And you would think that something as nice as, and gentle as a ladybug would, uh, would be something nice. Right. Wrong. wrong. <laughs> totally wrong. Um, and it starts out like this. I'm thinking about writing a new book. The title of this will be How to Get a Tan in Iraq While Fighting Off Flesh-Eating Ladybugs. Something's wrong with this place that even the ladybugs bite like hell. Yep, there I was, sitting and getting a little sun when I noticed two helicopter-sized bugs were attempting to land on my back. Anyway, back to the ladybug issue. 
Never before have I bitten, uh, have I ever been bitten by a ladybug, but I'm here to tell you they bite and it hurts. They have escaped from some secret lab and unleashed on the people of Iraq. They, they leave a mark too. What else happened? Oh, we finally got to take a shower yesterday. Nothing says I love you like a nice shower, complete with running water to clean the sweat from your, and previously <laughs> we thought that a Navy boat was, be was a bad place, but the very least, they usually get the option to take a shower on a nightly basis. Your choices are JP5 or water, just depends on the day. Thank God that we finally got the water back. We had a couple of guys smelling really ripe. I have to leave out a couple of the parts in here. It was so bad that I was donating my drinking water and begging them to wash, <laughs> wash up. You know, you roll in a carcass of rot, rotted animal something, it would, would improve the smell. Mm -hmm. So, again, they were, hard feel, they were heartfelt letters, and uh, there's a lot of stuff I have to actually leave out, but it rolls <laughs> a little bit better than that. But you tell about the experience. This is a great book. I thank you for writing this, Charles, because we get a feel like we're there. Even though we might not want to be there, you, you tell us how it is. So. It, it was a good time. Um, and I, I say that because of the people that I, were, that I was with. They made the experience. They, they made the time. It was a brotherhood. Mm -hmm. And people ask, would I do it again? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I would do it all over again, 100%. Awesome, Charles. Well, if you want to read the book, you can pick up your copy. Check out the website that you've seen on the bottom of the screen. Charles, thank you so much for being on this morning. I love having you on. I love being here. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing, Charles. I plan to every you're day. You're an inspiration. I'm going to take a quick break right now. I'll be right back after these messages. Stay with me.